because Jesus said that they may be one. I'm telling you, those platforms of this unity, they are going to close. Watch, watch out. The platform that will get the expression is the platform that encourages the unity of the body. Because we are better united to become like a force that can be broken. Wow, powerful words of prophecy right there. So welcome to another one, my dearest family. I have this video to share with you. We know we have heard ministers who are saying that they want to sanitize the body of Christ. And we also have heard ministers, I won't play uh, some of the videos here because now I may get into trouble. We have been saying also that, you know, the church can never be united it is not possible for there to be unity you know they have been saying that you know there has to be separation and all those things so let's hear what apostle johnson Suleiman has to say about this issue of unity in the body of christ tell me what you think about all this in the comments below like share comment and subscribe meet you in the next one as always god bless you my major worry was when i see the challenges in the life of believers around the world you see a committed believer still barren you hear a pastor's wife died of you hear a pastor himself has a kidney problem. In the midst of this end time move of God, I began to ask God, what is going on? I said, Lord, what is happening? You see a man of God who loves so much. I mean, this is an anointed man of God. He that he lost his brother. To a challenge that God has used him to solve in the life of people. I said, what is happening? I began to pray, pray, pray. And the Lord said, what is happening to your people is the spirit of Ishmael. Every man's hand shall be against him. His hand shall be against every man. The spirit of Ishmael has crept and swept into the church. The spirit of fighting one another. And God said there is an anointing that will never hit the church on one. The spirit of Ishmael is a radicalized spirit. It makes you fight for what you think it, you believe. And fight for what you think is right. Funny enough, it's only found in that religion. It's not supposed to be in this one. Because this is not a religion. This is a walk with God. It's a spiritual move. If you want to be an activist, go into politics, leave ministry. You see, eh? when the spirit of Ishmael is seated in a man's heart, he will fight his brother and give scriptural backing. There's a difference between being conversant with the scripture and being intimate with the Holy Spirit. You can know the Bible as a textbook. You can have knowledge of God. The proof of intimacy with the Holy Spirit is brokenness. When you are intimate with the Holy Spirit, you can't even fight back because you are scared of hurting your lover. The spirit of Ishmael has crept into the church. You can be conversant with scripture. Acts 18.24 tells us about a young man called Apollos. Apollos, mighty in scripture and eloquent. Check everyone who has the spirit of Ishmael. They are eloquent. Power of diction. Mastery of public speaking. More coherent than Archimedes than Socrates and Pluto. Many people are running with the revelation of bitterness. Brothers are bitter against themselves. They look for scripture to back it up. God nominated us, but we denominated ourselves. A united minority is stronger than a divided majority. I repeat it. The proof of intimacy with God is brokenness. You can't even fight. You say he was reviled and he revived no back. No, we cannot be united. We can't come together. Some people must be separated. Yet in John 17... Verse 11, he said that they may be one. Verse 22, that they may all be one. Whether the negative, whether the immature, that they may all be one. Let the, let the wheat and the tears grow together until the day of harvest. Speak of unity. It's not because certain people are making any impact by fighting their brothers. No. It's because we know that the devil is using that as an agenda to stop a revival. All the people that have been attacked from the pulpit, as their ministry closed, as it affected them, they're just making noise. But we know the devil has a bigger picture. There's something the devil. Look at church today. Brothers and sisters in church that are not talking to themselves. No matter what the man of God preaches. There are people that will never relate. Rebellion everywhere. Somebody leaves a ministry and begins to fight the ministry. You stayed in the ministry for 10 years, 15 years, for 20 years. And the ministry suddenly becomes so bad. So for 20 years, there was nothing good about that ministry. And the truth is this. When you walk out of a system or an organization. And you decide to stop. And fight them. You have slowed down your speed. You can't move forward. You are static. Because you need to be on the spot to fight where you are coming from. Some people who are speaking as though they heard from God. It's not God talking to them. It's bitterness. You must defend the sanctity of the gospel. Leave it. It's bitterness. There are things he has that man that is not happy about. So it's bitter. But it's covering up with scriptures. Leave it. Leave it. It's bitterness. Ask question. What has this man done? I heard. I was told. He won't tell you God said. 
God is not behind division. The spirit of Ishmael has possessed the church. It's in departments in church. You see choir, you see protocols, you see ushers, you see men, women. Everybody has this anger against leadership, anger against somebody, anger. And they have scriptural proofs and backs up. Prayer band leader in church will be raising prayer points against pastor. Resident pastor will be investigating head pastor. Assistant woman leader will do everything to get woman leader out. Politics everywhere. Even in homes. Rebellion. Husband, matrix, wife, wife, rebel against husband. Children rebel against their father. <laughs> Nobody has been more hurt than Jesus. People have used his name. People have brutalized his name. People have commercialized his name. Yet, where two or three are gathered, he's still there. He has not left the church because the church has abused him. He's still there. If Jesus that has been most abused is still in church, why are you leaving church? Keep loving him. And you are not loving him because things are good. You are loving him because he first loved you. First John 4 verse 19. That's why you love him. Romans 5 verse 8, God commended his love towards us. That while we are yet sinner, Christ died for us. John 13, 1, he said, having loved his own that is in the world, he loved them unto the end. First John 3 verse 1, he said, what manner of love has the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. In Jeremiah 31, he said, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. God is saying, even if you go to the mountain now, fast, 40 days, 100 days, the cloud, the heavens are thick. There's a dimension of rain that will never fall until the church become one. When somebody says, no, we cannot be one, that's not the Lord speaking. Because Jesus said that they may be one. I'm telling you, those platforms of this unity, they are going to close. Watch, watch out. The platform that will get the expression is the platform that encourages the unity of the body. Because we are better united. We become like a force that can't be broken. And don't get me wrong. Our talking about it does not mean that we, we, we tolerate excesses. No. It means when we see excesses, our first thing is to pray for restoration. Anytime you see anybody who is erring, the first thing that goes into your spirit is how that person should be restored. Not to furtherly disconnect the person totally. Where aggression failed, affection gained. So keep loving God, no matter what is happening. Were you treated roughly? A general overseer treated you wrongly. A prophet mahandled you. Keep loving God. Those of you who are young people, eh? you see a person on the pulpit. He's attacking a man of God. He has already located his calling. He has located his assignment. You that have not located yours, you are taking sides. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, sir. Exactly. <laughs> Continue. Tell them. Press their neck. <laughs> Press their neck. Roast them. Roast them. Okay. He has found his calling. You'll be there. Behind the keyboard. Your own calling is to stay on the keypad. And if you see people, the, the ministers causing all this confusion, it's their 30s and 40s. They are the crisis. People in their 30s and their 40s. Because they are like the son of Solomon, Rehoboam, who took counsel from the young men. It is the young men that are applauding you. When Apollos came, Apollos was mighty in scripture, yet he knew only the baptism of John. <laughs> took an Aquila and a Priscilla to take him indoors. That's why you can never see elders do things like that. Because they've been around and they know that this thing called ministry is draining. It's deep. Be careful of the things you tear down today. Because you might become a victim of it tomorrow. I used to talk anyhow. I used to attack him. If I attack Pope, Pope, you know Pope? <laughs> Me? And so all these things they are talking about now, quoting scriptures to... I will come out and say, which, which father? No. Bible says, call no man your father. I attack Pope, Pope. In the nomenclature of religious, of Christianity as a religious circle, who is bigger than Pope? I attack Pope. When I went to go and pray, God said, is that what I told you? Is that the way I said you say it? The Catholic community rose up against me. I said, I don't care. And God said, you don't care. You are not broken. If you are broken and you see your brother in pain, you will care. If you are broken and this thing will grieve your brother, we make an unbeliever applaud. You will care. Publicly, I came and I said, I'm sorry. Oh. I apologized. The true test of intimacy with God is not the abundance of scripture. It's the brokenness of the minister. And the proof of brokenness is that you are focused on your work with God. On your work with God. Avoid the spirit of Ishmael. 
even as I'm talking to you now, me, me, I'm still praying. Lord, break me. Even till now, break me. Because the Lord said, brokenness. Psalm 51, 17. He said, of a broken and a contrite heart, the Lord will not despise. I repeat it. You can be conversant with scriptures and not intimate with the Holy Spirit. There are people that have never in their life had a salvation experience, but they have PhD in theology. Satan quoted scripture. Satan quoted the word to the word. Imagine telling it is written, it is written. So how do we know? It's your brokenness. You become broken when you are very sensitive. Not that you can't fight. Not that you can't respond. Not that you can't attack, but you are conscious of offending him. What will he say? For you, it, your words are guarded. Not using scripture to express bitterness. You know, this younger generation don't know that when some people are talking on the pulpit, both of them either they were friends before. His friendship got sour. Or they were acquaintances before. It went sour. So they are recruited haters. You are not aware of what happened between them. When you hear them fighting themselves, just walk past. What is not your intention should not get your attention. You have a destiny to fulfill. Once you walk out of a system, you are with a man of God and you have left. There are several assignments God has for your life. Revenge is not one of them. Lord, deliver the church. Heal our hearts as we are here now. Heal our hearts. Heal our hearts. Set us free. For every man that's hurting, every woman that's hurting, may God heal your heart. Whatever has been done to you by leadership, done to you by anyone, may God heal you.